Good morning folks, 21st Century Caveman here. Hope everybody's well, hope everybody's happy and welcome to another episode in the series How to Make a Man Cave, She Shed, Workshop, Cabin in the Woods, whatever label you apply, the process is exactly the same. So here you can see me fix some, fixing some timbers to the perimeter of the man cave. Now these are actually treated roof battens which are 25 by 50 millimetres, in other words one by twos and typically they'll be used on roofs to secure tiles and slates. So these are treated timbers and they're absolutely perfect for an application like this and I bought them whilst on special offer and they were dirt cheap. You may also recall that I did use these on the outside of the man cave as fixing points for the feather edge boards. Now you'll also notice that I'm actually doubling these up so we have a nice wide ledge upon which I can secure the, uh, the, the work top. Notice that I'm using both screws and nails for securing these timber battens. There's no technical reason for that other than the fact that I was just trying to save a bit of money really. So I decided to screw the first battens to the timber framework so they're nice and secure and I had some nails left over from a previous job so I'm just using those to secure the second batten on top of the first. So there isn't a technical reason for that. I'm just being a bit tight basically. Right, so I've obviously measured up for the work tops and now I'm cutting these to size. Um, I'm going to be using 18mm structural grade OSB board, which is the same stuff which I've used as a, um, a liner on the outside of this building. It's structural grade, it's very strong, extremely durable, and I'm cutting these down to size using the Evolution Rage circular saw, which I've had for a couple of years now. Um, these are absolutely fantastic. From memory, I bought it for about 40 quid in a sale. Um, it comes with a multi purpose blade which can cut timber, plastic, mild steel, um, you know, uh, cut through nails but embedded in timber. So I've used this to build the man cave. I've, I've cut so much timber with it, it's untrue. I've built fences, I've repaired carports, and I'm still on the same blade. Although, to be fair, it is starting to get blunt. But when you consider the cost of the circular saw, you know, which comes with such a brilliant blade, you know, it's um, it's cheap really in the long run. So I'm sort of just measured the underside um, of the worktop where the battens are. And the reason is because I'm going to attach a, a timber, a thick timber batten on the leading edge on the underside of the worktop to give it extra strength and rigidity. And once again, I'm using some of the C18 construction timber, which I've used elsewhere on the build. Now, the reason I've actually um, doing it, oh yes, and also I'm using 40 millimeter decking screws to secure the worktop to these um, to these timbers. Now, I was just gonna say that the reason I'm actually doing it this way, rather than building the framework first and then putting the worktop on, is because I was toying with the idea of putting hinges on these worktops so that I could actually fold them up and attach them to the wall when I wasn't using them in order to give greater space in the man cave. So I sort of, you know, pondered this and um, that's why I actually, you know, cut the worktops and fixed them into place first of all, rather than just sitting them on top of a framework because I wasn't really quite sure it was basically a work in progress and pretty much I was making things up as I went along, although clearly I had given it some forethought. So anyway, um, in the end I decided the worktops would be secured and would be a permanent fixture and that I had enough space in the workshop to do what I needed to do and to move around that sort of stuff. Now, just as an aside while I'm thinking about it, I just thought I'd mention the clamps which I'm using. Now, I've had these for about a year and prior to using clamps, I'd always just made do with whatever I had at the time, which is normally a pair of hands and, you know, just secure 
um, any timbers um, for any projects which I was working on at that time. But one thing has become very clear over the past year or so is the fact that these are absolutely invaluable and they should be in the toolbox of any serious DIYer or handyman. And basically the way I look at it is the fact that for every pair of clamps you have, it's like having another pair of hands. Highly recommended. So having decided that I wasn't going to hinge the worktops, I then started securing these with screws every seven inches or so along the perimeter to the battens. And as I'm doing this, it's becoming clear that these worktops are going to be very strong and very stable. Now I weigh about 17 and a half stone, I'm a big chap, and I'm pretty sure that if I actually laid on these, even as they were at the moment, they would take my weight without collapsing. Now, just as an aside, guys, whilst you're watching the video, I would just mention that the impact driver, which I'm using at the moment, came as part of a set along with a combi drill. And this set, in conjunction with the circular saw, has basically enabled me to build this man cave. So these tools in particular are the definitely the top two power tools which I'd recommend for any serious DIYer or handyman. And as I say, I mean, yes, I've used other tools, but these are the two predominant tools which have enabled me to build this man cave along with a host of other stuff. And when it comes to having to replace these, I'll be looking to replace them with similar items, possibly from the same manufacturer, depending on the deals which are available at the time. So here I'm just trying to sort of you know, work out how to cut the corner off this piece of worktop. Basically when you walk in the door it would actually dig in your thigh or your side. So I just penciled out a few lines just trying to work out what sort of angle to cut this down on. And I'm going to be completely honest, if I'd have just left it as it is at the moment that would have been absolutely fine. But part of the course for me, you know, sometimes I just don't know when to leave well enough alone fanning around with it. So I made a couple more cuts on these, but because the blade on the circular saw was a bit blunt, it didn't cut the angles particularly sharp. So I made a bit of a bodge on it, bodge on it at this point, but, um, I, you know, I subsequently rectified that. Something else um, I need to mention is the fact that with the USB boards there are two sides to these. There's a good side and a rough side. The rough side is pretty evident when you look at it really or just run your hands over it. But you want to go for the smoother side. That's your best side and that's the side which ultimately I will be treating and painting. So as you can see, things are coming on quite nicely now and we'll soon start working on the legs which will support the worktops. Now one of the things I need to make, um, make you aware of is the fact that I didn't want to build a sort of, you know, really complex framework to sit the worktops on. I wanted it to be as minimal as possible so there's plenty of access underneath the worktops to store lots of stuff and also um, to enable the work tops to be usable. I'm six foot four, I've got long legs, I'm a tall guy, and I need plenty of leg space underneath the work top so I can sit at any part and um, do what I need to do without being obstructed. And here I'm using 100 millimeter turbo gold screws.
So as you can see, there's no fancy joints or anything on here. I'm not a qualified joiner. Everything um, is fixed mechanically and the butt joints. So just to make sure that these legs are as secure um, as possible and also keep the worktop stable. I'm just using these old brackets and securing them to the floor, the legs to the floor, just to keep them nice and, um, um, and upright and stable. These old brackets, I bought loads of them from Lidl. They're a brilliant price and uh, they're excellent products, brilliant value for money. They do come in different sort of you know shapes and sizes basically and uh, if you're ever doing a little bit of shopping in Lidl for example or indeed Aldi and you see some of these just pick them up even if you don't need them at that point in time because they always come in handy you never know when you might need them. Okay guys, so look, the worktops have now been fixed into place and as you can see there's lots of storage space underneath the worktops and also there's quite a bit of leg space as well. There's also a reasonable area um, in between the worktops in the middle of the man cave. So the intention is to completely empty out my third bedroom, um, put all the storage boxes in the man cave underneath the worktops thereby freeing up another bedroom so i do appreciate you watching please join me in the next episode thank you